Hi, my name is Maria. I'm 14 and I'm in year 9. Hi, I'm Jared. I'm in year 10 and I'm 15. Hi, my name's Tamina. I'm 13 and I'm in year 9. Over the course of 10 weeks, five facilitators delivered weekly sessions to year 9 and 10 students at Edmonton County School, introducing the students to their creative practices. Close Quarters is a project conceived by artists and designers with a connection to Edmonton. They're a close-knit group of friends, schoolmates and siblings. Cheng Ao is a creative director. Their sessions interpreted corner shops as galleries of fascinating art and design. Here. In their workshops, the students created their own concepts for corner shop snacks using clay and cardboard. Tamina, what are you making? I'm making a bear styled juice box. It's going, going really well. Corner shops, I see them as a gallery of artwork that's accessible for everyone. And what we're making here today is artwork that's accessible for everyone. I'm taking pictures of you taking pictures. <laughs> the students showed the facilitators the ways they were already engaging in art through the art that they consume, enjoy and critique, as well as their own art forms and practices. These are my clay sculptures. This is a snake. This is just a dragon's head. This is the form body of a dragon. Like, I thought with clay, like you can just remodel it. You can just remake it. You can get rid of stuff. Like this one, different body shapes, different design. And then you just kind of go with it. I hope to make like, like sculptures like this high and like make more realistic ones. So that right now I'm just starting like this. I do digital art, so I just enjoy drawing online on my phone. I just draw wherever I go, pretty much. I've been working on this new one. Oh, it's like a, it's a cool. mini character, I think. Nice. So I, I draw a bunch of different cartoony-ish characters. They don't really take long to make either, like maximum maybe like three hours if I'm taking my time on a drawing, so like this one oh, wow. with colour and everything. Wow. You do that on your phone? Yeah. The students also interviewed each other about their own specialisms and what they knew about art. Does anything affect your art, such as how you're feeling or music? Uh, my mood mainly does affect my art, so if, I, um, if I'm if i like upset, I'll probably do something <laughs> like reflect into my mood. But it also depends on like my memories and my past. If I have like a really nice memory that I want to like recreate or something of that sort, I'll probably like paint it to like remind me of something of that sort. Or if I'm feeling like upset or if I have like a terrible memory, I'll probably do it just as a comfort to like get it all out on the canvas. I normally like bake, sometimes cook normally, mac and cheese. Specials. What inspired you to start cooking? I would say it would be in food tech and having my friends try my food, telling me that it's good and I should continue, and that just motivated me to continue doing it more and more. Tope Olufemi is an electronic music producer. In their sessions, the students experimented with sound. Together, they created music with recordings that the students had made of different objects and spaces. The artists realised that there was a lot that the young people knew about different specialist crafts. It was also interesting to gauge which sessions the students enjoyed and why, and how the sessions related back to their personal lives and endeavours. The most surprising session I would say is the political writing. This session was led by author and organiser Lola Olufemi. Their sessions invited students to challenge their political conditions with creative writing. For some reason, I expected it to be less interesting than it was. Before, I wasn't really a fan of political writing and like writing about a cause. But after this session, it's really just made me want to write more about it. And it's just interesting to know about people's struggles. Before I came to the class, I expected to keep my head down, not really talk. But I feel like I contributed I came out of my comfort zone. I felt more 
open than usual because I'm normally like a closed book. When running the project, we thought it would be important to expose the students to different practices. I've always been really interested in the neighbourhood that I grew up in. I realised that I had this network of amazingly excellent artists around me who were from Edmonton or they went to school in Edmonton and I thought what better to do than to harness that to share that with people who might have had a similar experience to me. Definitely learnt about new types of art in terms of small crafts that we've done in the first two sessions on products which is it's really interesting to learn about and it's fun to do like small activities. I would definitely recommend it. It's really fun to like do small activities outside of, well still in school, but outside of like the learning part, like the lesson. Like you're still learning things, but it's more enjoyable this way than to learn about it in like a classroom way. I think it's really important that emerging artists who are doing things independently get to run and be in control of projects like this. So I wrote to the Arts Council, I got some money. I basically had to describe what would the outcomes be of a project like this. And the aim was that people should be supported through creativity to feel more confident and to be able to work with one another, young people specifically. The project demonstrates the importance of young people having outlets for expression with the guidance of artists who are really invested in their communities. This course is just one example of how intergenerational exchange is key to the development of artists. Good job. So, essentially what this is, is this is a drum bus.